Why don't we do it on the road? have I remember the first time I played one I was probably six seven somebody had it at a church we were singing at and uh, it's one of my favorite roads in town I am at Beach Creek recording studio in Brentwood Tennessee and sometimes I will get over here and just camp out and do a bunch of overdubs so if you got overdubs you want me to do let me know I can do them this is probably my favorite roads got a cool world tour over here that's in amazing shape this piano over here is absolutely one of the best in nashville and uh one of my favorites mike and sue gay on this place and they are kind enough to let me come over here whenever i'm working on vocals they have some incredible microphones and outboard gear and it's just a great place to work and get creative kind of away from all the stuff that's going on and uh but i wanted to uh kind of give you a little bit of a, uh, just kind of an example of what a really good Fender Rhodes sounds like. I think this is a 19, what did he tell us the other day? 19, uh, 1980? 1980? Yeah, Suitcase so. Rhodes? Yeah. <clears throat> and um, this is one of the best ones and I can't, I can't, you'll hear me a lot as we continue on with this uh, Insights series. Uh, make sure you hit the bell so you get uh, notifications when we upload a new video. Subscribe, like the videos. That would sure help us out a lot. But you'll hear me a lot as we carry on with this thing. You'll hear me a lot talk about my influences. And uh, when I first sat down at a Fender Rhodes, I had never really heard much jazz. I'd never really heard much uh, pop music played on a Rhodes where I really knew it was a Rhodes. Now I had heard some, but I didn't know what I was hearing. Being six years old, um, I, I just didn't know, you know, I'd never felt one, I'd never seen one, so I didn't know what it was. But then I started knowing, oh, that's a Rhodes, you know. I remember the first song I heard on a Rhodes was the Cliff Richard song, Devil Woman. With evil on her mind. Um, but then as I uh, got into 
more um, of the jazz music. I remember the Breaking Away album came out in 1979, Al Jarreau. And uh, as I went through high school, uh, junior high and high school, my musical mentors, and they were giants in my world, Paul Edmondson, who was uh, I still look up to as a wonderful friend. He was our choral director in high school, but I've known him since I was in third grade. And then my high school band director, Derry Pilkington, he really turned me on to a lot of jazz. Uh, Diane Turner, my junior high band director, turned me on to some great music as well. But Mr. P, he was very responsible for turning me on to like Spiral Jara and uh, David Sanborn, Bob James, and uh, uh, Manhattan Transfer, Chick Corea, you know. <laughs> music started using uh, the Fender Rhodes, a lot of intros that I remember um, from 1981. Uh, Climax Blues Band. I just, I mean, I can't, again, I can't stress enough how influenced I was by so many of these great players. I remember when the Jero album came out, and that, the big radio song was, Morning, Mr. Radio, Morning, Mr. Cherry, whatever the words are done, yeah, I tell you that everything is just fine. You know, that was a big song. And then uh, Radio Loved. You know. Uh. Uh, uh. Yeah, Boogie Down. But on that record, I was so influenced by some of the things that really, I, there were three other songs that, I mean, totally influenced the way I play today. Uh, I Will Be Here For You, a lot of you remember that. I love that tune. And then uh, I did this song at my uh, senior recital at Belmont. left-hand exercise for you guys that love to sit down and play a Rhodes or a piano uh, on that record, a song called Save Me. I'll never forget, I was sitting at a Rhodes. We were doing an Alison Krauss album some years back, and she had Abe Laboria Jr. and Sr. And Abe Sr. had played on a bunch of these Al Jarreau records that I just loved as a kid. And so uh, I just, on a whim, thought, man, if I start playing this, maybe he'll remember it. I mean, why should I think that he would remember? Because we all play on so many things and we don't remember them. But lo and behold, he started playing it with me, and it was one of the biggest thrills. It reminded me of when Shannon Forrest and I started playing Rosanna, trying to bait David Hungate into playing it with us years ago. And he played it with us, too, talking about a thrill. But uh, the bass line... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
crazy and uh, so when I sit down at a Rhodes I'm reminded of all that stuff and I just love all those big chords probably the song that I you know after I knew what a Rhodes sounded like probably the biggest pop hit that I remember that started with the Rhodes was uh So anyway, just thought I'd uh, come with you today on a little journey on the Fender Roads. And I'm so glad these things exist. And uh, I'm sure we'll come back to it at some point during the series. Again, if you, uh, if you dig this and you want us to keep doing it, please subscribe and uh, like the video. Hit the bell so that you're... Uh, bell icon so that you're uh, notified whenever we come with a new video we're going to try to do a bunch of these i got a lot of fun stuff uh, that i want to address and a lot of questions that people have already asked me that i look forward to uh, talking about so join me for the journey my brothers and my sisters whether you're a musician or you just love music i think this is going to be fun god bless all of you and we'll see you next time